everyone. This is Nicole Starr, the Lifebox Safe Surgical Fellow. I'm also a general surgery resident from the University of California, San Francisco. And I wanted to share some of our experience using phone calls to follow uh, surgical site infections in Ethiopian patients. And our work was partially funded by the GE Foundation. So surgical site infections are responsible for a large proportion of morbidity and mortality in surgical patients worldwide. But unfortunately, these inf infections disproportionately affect patients in low and middle income countries. And in fact, SSI is the leading hospital acquired infection in Sub-Saharan Africa. When it comes to getting quality data, a major limitation in low resource settings has often been following patients to 30 days to ascertain the real rate of surgical site infection. And many of the strategies that we use have been fairly low yield. For example, a study in Cambodia showed that reviewing patient charts was uh, revealing only 16% of surgical site infections. And if we're expecting patients to come to their post-op visits for direct observation of their wound, that strategy can also fail. Another study in Kenya found that only a quarter of patients actually go to their post-operative appointments. And this is uh, really reminiscent of what we see in Ethiopia. So we uh, weren't just trying to find the best strategy for identifying outpatient SSI, but this work was part of our ongoing Clean Cut program, which is a quality improvement program with the aim to reduce surgical site infections. So we decided to use a strategy of having surgical nurses reach out to patients 30 days after their surgery. And we trialed this in both urban and rural settings and wanted to see what proportion of post-operative events we actually detected in the outpatient setting. So Clean Cut is a part of the SALTS program, which is the National Surgical Program of Ethiopia. And we fit in under pillars seven and eight, which are focused on improving the quality of surgical services and also the quality of data focused on monitoring and evaluation. Clean Cut is uh, aimed to improve surgical infection prevention practices, many of which are found in the surgical safety checklist. And we focus on six key elements. Appropriate hand washing and patient skin decontamination, giving antibiotics on time, ensuring integrity of reusable linens, gowns and drapes, uh, confirming instrument sterility, <clears throat> counting gauze at appropriate time points in surgery, and using the surgical safety checklist as a tool for teamwork and communication. We follow patients through three phases of care during clean cut. We directly observe infection prevention practices in the operating room. We then follow patients with direct observation every day during their inpatient stay, and we call them at 30 days after surgery to ascertain outcomes like infections, other complications, reoperations, and mortality. We then help hospitals understand what their specific gaps in infection, preve infection prevention practices are. They develop their own change ideas and implement small quality improvement projects to improve their overall infection prevention practices and reduce surgical site infections. This experience uh, I'll share was from two hospitals in Ethiopia. The first was a referral center in the capital, Addis Ababa, that has four operating rooms, several surgeons, gynecologists, and subspecialists, and also in a rural general hospital that's several hours away from the capital with two operating rooms, a surgeon, a gynecologist, and some mid-level surgical providers. The patient and their family phone numbers were taken uh, at the time of their operation by nurses and surgical nurses called those patients 30 days after their operation. We asked them to call all patients that had been discharged alive before their 30th post-op day. And the definition of SSI can be variable between studies. So we chose to use the CDC definition, which is also the same definition used by the Global Surge Collaborative. We defined inpatient surgical site infections as patients having purulent drainage from their wound, developing an abscess, or having any combination of erythema or fever and wound opening, either by spontaneous wound dehiscence or intentional opening by the surgical provider. We were a little more discerning with our definition of outpatient infections, as we wanted to be more specific for infections and not overestimate the complication rate. So we defined outpatient infections as patients who had purulent drainage from their wound or wounds that opened either through dehiscence or by uh, opening through an outpatient surgical provider. We followed 700 patients, and the vast majority of them were female. They had low numbers of comorbidities, and about 78% of the operations were emergencies. Patients stayed in the hospital an average of four days, and we were able to follow 95% of patients to discharge. 
We were able to reach 76% of patients by their 30-day phone call, and actually 87% in the rural setting and 62% in the urban setting. We had an overall SSI rate of 5.6%, and about half of those surgical site infections were captured as an outpatient. And our overall complication rate, including mortality and other complications, was 9%, with about a third of those captured in the outpatient setting. Our ability to follow patients also improved over time. So in the beginning half of our program, we captured about 65 to 70% of patients with a phone call, and the latter half we were able to capture up to 95%. So to summarize, we were able to reach more than 75% of our patients with a phone call after surgery. We captured 48% of SSI as an outpatient, and 34% of all of our complications were captured as an outpatient. And we improved our performance over time to 95% by the end of the program. We also performed a qualitative evaluation with some of our nurses to assess barriers and facilitators to this strategy. So nurses reported some barriers where this was initially not part of their routine workflow, it felt like additional work for them, and also they were worried that making these phone calls would cost them out of pocket. But they reported a number of positive elements of the strategy, including the fact that they, patients really appreciated hearing from them with this phone call, and the nurses actually reported increased job satisfaction through being able to check in with their own patients after discharge. And as a program, we provided data cards to the nurses so they wouldn't have to pay out of pocket. So in conclusion, uh, following patients with this 30-day phone call was effective and feasible for us, even for rural patients in a low-income setting. And we identified a high percentage of our complications in the outpatient setting by this phone call. So this strategy is important for obtaining quality data up to 30 days postoperatively, and also helped us direct patients to appropriate care. I'd like to give a big thank you to all my colleagues at Lifebox, and especially for our um, hospital teams on the ground who really did all of this work and uh, would not be possible without them, and also to my mentors at UCSF who make my time in Ethiopia possible. And I'd be happy to take any questions from my audience.